We are going to apply a histogram transformation to this image. Let's open the real-time preview and adjust the midtones to increase the overall lightness of the image. Once we've adjusted the parameters, we'll close the preview and use the New Instance button to apply the histogram transformation to the image. We can also use the New Instance button to create what's called a process icon. To do this, we drag the button and drop it onto the workspace background. This process icon now contains all the parameter values that we've just configured for this process. If we reset the tool, we can double-click on the process icon to recover the parameters. We can even reset the tool and close the process window and double-click on the icon to reopen the process window with all the parameters we configured earlier. We can also load the parameters by dragging and dropping the icon onto the bottom bar of the process window. Obviously, this will only work on the process we've made the icon for. We can't open another process, like this one, for example, and drop the histogram process icon onto it. If we do, we get this error message. We're now going to adjust the color saturation in the highlight areas of this image. As we only want to adjust these areas, we're going to use a lightness mask. We apply the mask to the target image and open the color saturation tool, which we find here in Intensity Transformations. We can set a different saturation for each hue, but in this case we're going to increase the color saturation equally for all hues. First, we're going to increase the range of the vertical axis of the graph so that we can increase the color saturation quite a lot. We can open a real-time preview of this process, too. Once we've made the adjustments we want, we close the preview and apply the process to the whole image. Now we can save these parameters in another process icon. It's important to note that the process icon saves all the parameters set for this process, but it doesn't save any details about how we applied it and to what. In this case, we applied it through a lightness mask, but to find this out, we need to open the image's processing history. We talk about this in more detail in the videos on processing histories. We're going to apply a third process to this image, a chrominance noise reduction using TGV denoise. TGV denoise is a very intensive process, so we're going to test it on two small areas of the image, one in the shadows and one containing the main object in the image, the moon, which includes both very light areas and shadows. Focusing on these two small areas speeds up the experimentation process. As noise always affects the low signal areas the most, we're going to invert the mask. By doing this, we'll protect the highlight areas to reduce the noise more aggressively in the shadows. We should always hide the mask when we apply processes so that we can see how it affects the image. We're going to switch TGV denoise to lab mode and uncheck this box for applying the lightness settings. We'll keep the default parameters here for now and apply the process. The effect is very subtle, but we'll be able to see it more clearly if we select Chrominance Display Mode. Let's increase the edge protection value to 8 and apply the process again. Let's increase the edge protection a little more Now let's display the color image. All the pixels with spurious colors have disappeared. 
Now we save this process as a new icon. We can always save a process icon whether we're applying the process to a preview or to the main view. In fact, we can save any icon with the parameters for any process without even needing to have an image open. Now let's close the process window and apply the process to the second preview. We can execute a process icon without having to open the process window. Let's select Chrominance Display Mode again. Now let's imagine that we want the noise reduction to be less intense because we can see that the edge of the moon is becoming blurred. One option is to lower the edge protection to 8 and apply the process again. If we prefer this result, instead of creating a new process icon, we can replace the one we already have. To do this, we simply drag and drop the New Instance button on the process icon we saved earlier. PixInsight will ask us if we want to replace the process instance. Now the edge protection setting in this third process icon isn't 9.99, it's 8. If we're happy with the process, we can apply it to the main view. Thank you.